everyone. Welcome back to Friday Off The Grid. I am recording this on Thursday morning. Um, as those who watched Monday's update video know, I am leaving on a cross-stitch retreat this afternoon. And super excited. Wanted to make sure that I had my Friday video done and ready so that uh, so that we could all join together tomorrow night where I'm stitching and where you're stitching and the party continues all weekend long. So thanks for joining me again today. I, I really, you know, this project that I've got to share with you today that I'd like to work on was the same piece that I used for my very, very first Stitch With Me video. And it's a piece that I absolutely adore and I would love to finish it soon. <laughs> so as you can see, I have um, a good chunk of the, of the piece already done, but there is still a fair bit to go. So I'm just gonna show you the picture here of what it's gonna look like when it's done. So this is a design from Nancy's Needle. It's counted canvas work. And this is from her regional quilt series and the piece is called Starry Skies. So as you can see, I have done to this dark blue border here. And what I'm gonna work on today is the lighter blue done in the pearl cotton number five that, uh, that surrounds the outside of that. I'm going to, I've, I've put a little, I've placed a little thread here to help me know when to stop because when you're doing this sort of large stitch, it's easy to just, you know, it's so fun and so fast that it's easy to just, you know, keep on going. So I've made a little mark there to help myself know when to stop. And then what I'll do is I'll start going in the opposite direction. So for those of you who haven't watched uh, the first Stitch With Me video that I did, it was a little bit of, I guess, a tutorial. And, and I have had lots of people since who have seen this project on the few floss tube episodes that I did where I talked about it, and they wanted to know if I would do a counted canvas tutorial. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna briefly discuss the things that I'm doing again here today, because, um, well, it's a good refresher for those who maybe are a few years away from counted canvas work, or you are dying to learn how to do this. Or maybe you have this project in your stash and it's something that you've been nervous about trying because maybe you weren't familiar with some of the terms. Um, thought I would share it with you today and I'll just go over a few of the basics as I go about it. So again, this is called Counted Canvas Work. From Nancy's Needle is one of my favorites. Um, I, I tend to really be drawn to her designs. I just think that they're absolutely beautiful. And when you combine what looks like a beautiful quilt block with shades of blue, I'm hooked. I'm, I'm a sucker for it. So I'm, just, I'm going to show you the supplies list because this is the page that's found at the back of the pattern and it's it's not a secret i'm not giving away any any parts of the pattern that are secret um, but i thought I, it would help me discuss the supplies with you and i have done this before i know so um, this is for the benefit of those who have never seen me do this before or heard me talk about it um, for those of you who have i just i hope you enjoy stitching along with me today so the canvas is is a different fabric it's a very, very stiff fabric compared to regular stitching uh, cloth, per se. So as you can see, it's fairly firm, and if you listen, you can hear it. It's, it's, quite, it's quite stiff. And so that is called mono canvas, and that's the, uh, that's the type of canvas that I'm using. It's in the sandstone colorway, and it's made by a company called Zweigart. And now, stretcher bars. 14 by 14 stretcher bars. All canvas work designs can be slightly different size. It depends on what the designer decides. So it gives you stitch count in a design area exactly the same as a regular cross stitch piece. Now stretcher bars, that's what these are. That's what these wooden, this wooden frame is. They come in pairs. So don't, if, you, if you're going to buy some stretcher bars and start canvas work, make sure you buy two packages because each package only comes with two of these bars and you need four of them in order to make a frame. So they, they fit together. Um, can you see? Where is the thing there? Yeah, 
as you can see, they're sort of dovetailed, dovetailed together there. And the fabric is stapled or tacked to the back. And we do use um, masking tape in order to cover the edges. Because this is so stiff, these are very um, scratchy where it's not covered by the masking tape. So that's how you prepare your fabric. It's always a good idea to determine which way is up when you're working because when you're doing geometric designs like this, it's very easy to forget where you are and lose your place. So all I do is I just write the word top on the top of the frame and then I can never go wrong. I know where I am. So the threads that are required for counted canvas work are, are fun. It's a whole new world from, you know, DMC, and, sorry, not DMC because we do use DMC, but, you know, regular cross stitch thread. There, there are different products that we use for counted canvas work. So the first one that I've already mentioned is a pearl cotton. This is a DMC product and the one that I'm using for this design is $7.99. So $7.99 DMC, which is exactly like uh, cross stitch thread, you know, $7.99, it's the same color. We all know $7.99, it's one of my favorites. So that's the, uh, that's the DMC Pearl Cotton. That's right there. And so Karen Collection Snow. Now what this is, it's a metallic. I use floss away bags to keep my canvas work threads organized. I just find that they're nice and easy. So it comes in a skein just like this, just like the Pearl Cotton. It comes in a, in a skein that you have to uh, be very careful with as you're detangling or what I do is I use the card itself as you can see I use the card to wrap the product around and that keeps it neat and tidy and free of knots and it's a good idea to do this immediately after taking it off the packaging because otherwise you're going to end up with a huge tangled mess so as you can see this is it's a metallic but it's also a nice soft metallic this is not like Krennic you know, horror stories of the 90s with that metallic that wasn't nice to use. This stuff is lovely. It's lovely and soft. It's really nice to work with. The other metallic that is used in this pro project is called Rainbow Gallery Crestadoro. And the colorway is C08 Steel Gray. Now, when I was kitting this up, Kathy at Thread and I didn't have this in stock. And I think there was some trouble at that time getting it in stock. So we substituted it for another product that was um, also by Rainbow Gallery, but uh, slightly, slightly different. So this is uh, Treasure Braid, Rainbow Gallery Treasure Braid. And I can't remember, there's no color name on here. There's a, there's a number, TR297. So whether that tells anybody anything or not, I don't know. But the, the Treasure Braid is a slightly stiffer metallic. Still nice to work with, but not quite as soft and luxurious feeling as the snow that's made by Karen. Now, as you can see, there are slight differences in the color. And on my project, you can see where the difference is. So this metallic that's here, the slightly brighter, slightly shinier stuff, is the Treasure Braid. And then this softer metallic here is the snow. So it's a slight difference, it's a subtle difference, but it just adds that bit of dimension to the piece. It's just so lovely, lovely, really lovely to work with. So those are the two metallics that are in this design. The other threads are also by Karen, Karen Collection Watercolors. Now these are, oh, these are so nice, I love these. So I have, a, I have one skein. As you can see, I've got, this is the indigo. Um, they come also in a skein, like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I prepare my um, watercolors for counted canvas work because it's a really easy way to get the exact amount that the, 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 a good length for stitching with. And this was a trick that Kathy at Thread and I shared with us one year when we were doing a canvas work piece. So as you can see, 
it's tied to the card at the top and you just have to figure out where it's attached take it apart and as you open it up it's just like a skein of yarn so it unwinds like this and then it's in a loop we've all seen this before with our our variegated cotton threads so it comes in a loop and at one end it's tied together and there's a knot at the top and so what we do is we come to the other end so there's the end with the knot and here's the other end and you take that spot where it's looped and you take your scissors and you just cut right through that and now what you have is you have lengths of of the watercolors that are exactly the right amount to use for stitching it's about 18 inches I think and they're nicely um, tied together at the top so when you want to use one you just you can just pull one out of the bunch like that and then the remainder of your threads still to be used can be neatly put away in your floss away bag as you can see I've I'm still working on my other skein of indigo so uh, Karen watercolors come in there are three strands there are three strands per length of thread and so when we are doing canvas work generally um, at least all of the patterns that I've come across you separate out your your thread before you start and that's just the same as doing it with a DMC separate into the three use your thumb and forefinger to pinch together at the top take a strand and gently pull the length out and away from the others and then simply smooth out the rest of the now that that's gonna bother me because that's not how I normally do it when when I have the extras left over I take my two fingers and I just roll it into a neat circle as you can see there's my other one and I just keep them together in the bag and then they're easy to find so uh, but unfortunately for me I am not using uh, Karen watercolors indigo at the moment so I'm just gonna go ahead and roll that up keep that set aside so that's indigo there is the other colors that I'm using this is oh, which one was this pretty sure this was dawn yeah dawn and then there's delphinium and Lexi's blue yes I was right this pale color this, the variegation is there. It's a little bit hard to see. It's probably a little washed out on the camera. And that's called Dawn. It's just, it's beautiful. Very light pale pinks and blues. And this Lexi's blue, that's, that's gorgeous. I'm going to take that out of the package so you can see the color on that. So, it's quite pretty. Really pretty. So anyways, those are the supplies for the project. I think I've covered everything. Yep. Oh, ooh, look at this. Or treasure braid number 12 silver gray, TR297. Well, look at that. So it was another project that we substituted something that wasn't on the pattern. We do that all the time because, well, you can change it to your own tastes, right? You could do this design in a completely different color palette. That would be cool as well. But, you know, me and blues, it's, it's, uh, it's going to happen. So those are my, all of my supplies now I'm ready to get my pearl cotton ready pearl cotton exactly the same situation as the watercolors comes in that skein that we unwind now this one where are we this one's always a little bit messier or trickier than I always have to be careful with this one because I really have a tendency of putting this one into knots yeah, that's wrong way there. Okay, so what am I gonna, am I gonna do one length? I think, 
Yes. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here that I do with the other ones. Generally, you, I would go a little longer with the pearl cotton, but since I'm chatting, I don't want to get distracted, so I'm just going to go ahead and make it a, maybe a little shorter than I normally would. So I'm going to pull out that length. Whoops, sorry about that. Earthquake. Um, all right, so there's my pearl cotton. Pretty sure my needle is a 20 or a 22, might even be an 18. Lost track. Bought them a while ago, so not quite sure. All right, so here we go. Now at the back, I can show you. We start our thread with something called a Bargello tuck. I'm pretty sure I'm in the camera frame there. Just check, looks good, okay. So Bargello tuck, it's a very fancy way to say, th sew your thread in and then secure it. That's it, that's all we're doing. So I'm taking a nice chunk of thread that's at the back of my fabric. I'm gonna sew that through. Actually, this is a pretty good length. I probably wouldn't go longer than this. And I, I sew it through until the very end is completely hidden underneath the th amount of thread that I've chosen to sew it under. And then I'm just gonna take one more little tiny scoop of the same threads moving in the same direction that I started with and I'm gonna tuck that end together and as you can see it's now secure well actually look at this watch this ready ha not so secure now that 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 tends to happen more on canvas work than on stitching work when you use the Bargello tuck because as you can see of course these stitches are much much longer and they're a lot looser in the back than canvas work is so if I can tug on it and it comes out really easily I will redo it and maybe take a little less of a scoop on my tuck and then now it's nice and secure all right so back to the front I'm going to have to just count up I think I have to go up seven holes we count holes on our canvas so one two three four five six seven eight <clears throat> excuse me one two three four five six seven it's actually eight okay so I have to go up from the center and I'm going to count up eight holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to move over one hole to the right. And that should be if I have counted correctly. And if not, it's not hard to rip it out and do it over again. This should be where I'm going to be starting my thread. Now, I should mention if you are starting this project with no stitching on the back and you need to be able to start your thread, you simply start with a waist knot. Uh, the way I do my waist knot is I tie a knot at the very end of the thread. I would go in through the front of the project away from the stitching area and then come up in the back where I needed to start my work. And then as I stitch, it covers over enough of that extra thread in the back that, and then you can snip it off when it's completely covered. And what I do is I snip off a length and then I do another Bargello tuck on the back just to make sure it's nice and secure. Okay, so I should be starting in the right place here. And I'm going to be going down and to the left one hole. And then, now this is called um, Joblin. Um, let me make sure I'm pronouncing that right, the stitch type. Jobelin, uh, slanted Jobelin stitch. Okay, now there are variations on this stitch, but in a nutshell, this is the slanted Jobelin. And it looks like Gobelin, G-O-B-L. How do I spell that again? G-O-B-E-L-I-N. Maybe it is Gobelin, but I don't think so. Pretty sure it's Jobelin. Not like the fabric, which is with a J. This is with a G. All right, so now I'm coming back up to the right of where my first, <clears throat> excuse me, where my first stitch started and down to the left. 
And then I should make sure that this is pretty sure you can see this. Hope so. Anyway, if not, I guess I'm going to be reshooting this video. It's hard for me to see the camera while I'm doing this because it's up a little high for me to look at. And down to the left, up to the right, down to the left, and we just fill it in. When I get to the bottom, I'm going to count that I have the right number of, <clears throat> excuse me, a frog in my throat today, that I have the right number of slanted stitches down to the bottom corner there. You always want to check and double check before you carry on, because if you're wrong, well, we all know what happens. We have to rip it out. Okay, so let's count now that I'm at the, this is the bottom corner where it joins with the other middle part of the top design. And then what happens is from here, I should be able to just carry on and make each of my stitches to the left carry on along here. So let's count. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there should be eight, uh, of those slanted stitches before I then have to start doubling them or sharing them with the bottom. Let's see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm right. I'm good to go. So now I can zoom all the way over. I can see that little thread there is going to get in my way, isn't it? So I'm going to have to Move that over there. As you can see, it's quick and just so, so pretty. So did everybody enjoy the Super Bowl party last weekend? And by Super Bowl party, I mean stitching. <laughs> I'm not a football watcher. I made this comment on the Facebook group. Uh, and if you haven't heard about it by now, uh, it is called Friday Off The Grid. It's a Facebook group where, oh, look, my thread just came right out. So there's not even any point in keeping it there. I'm just going to have to eyeball it my best and hope that I don't overshoot the mark. So the Facebook group is called Friday Off the Grid. We really hope that you'll join us over there. It is a friendly, warm, really wonderful group of stitchers and the support that that everyone offers to each other on their projects and finishing up their whips. It's really it's just a really nice place to hang out on Facebook and it's a really nice corner of the internet when so many other corners of the internet are filled with maybe not such nice commentary in the commentary fields or some such malarkey. It's really quite a nice place to be. So isn't this fast? When I, when I get around to working on this canvas piece, I think, you know, why isn't this done yet? Really, why isn't this done? Because honestly, when, when you sit down and just put a few stitches in, it's amazing the coverage you get. So, but as you can see, of course, you run through the thread a lot faster. And that's why we want those lengths to be a little bit longer so that you're not having to rethread your needle every two or three minutes. So I probably could have made my pearl cotton a little bit longer, but you know, the thing is, the longer you make your thread, the longer you make these, these beautiful cottons, uh, the more chance there is that it will get fuzzy and, you know, not look very nice on the front of your fabric because of course you're pulling it through very stiff uh, canvas. 
so it it's not um, it's not always the greatest for the thread and sometimes it is better to actually go a little shorter rather than a little longer and then the quality of the floss and the thread that's laying on the top of your project will be as beautiful as possible um, not that nice sort of shiny shiny look that that proper cottons and, and lovely things get. So if you couldn't tell, I'm totally in love with this project. I'm totally in love with canvas work and I really, I should be doing a lot more of it because it's just so fun. Anyways, I'm going to sew this end in. Whoops. I keep knocking the thing with the frame. So now to end my thread, I'm pretty sure you can see that. I'm going to do the same thing as how I start. And this is really important because, because of these loose stitches at the back, we want to make sure that our threads are really secure. So I'm coming under quite a large number of stitches at the back. And I am then going to do the exact same little step that I did at the beginning with that little tuck, that little extra tuck but this time I'm going to take it through a fair number of more stitches after I've done the tuck. I just think that that gives it just a little bit more of an anchorage there at the back. Okay, so then, where are my scissors? There they are. Little scissors all over the place here. Snip off my end and we are good to go after I thread my needle and I can do a little bit more. So as you can see, I've started to add my pearl cotton there. I think it looks pretty great. Here's where I'm headed. So as you can see, there are these stars all in the corners, these little groupings of stars. And what I'd like to do is after I do a little bit more of this uh, DMC 799, I'm going to come in and I'm actually going to stitch a few of these stars. And then the fill-in work for my silver should be a little easier. I won't have to count as much. So we'll see. But it's so fun. So fun. Anyways, I'm going to keep today's episode a little shorter uh, for a Stitch With Me video. And I, I know full well there are so many other wonderful floss tubes channels and videos out there for you to watch. So I hope that if you have recorded a video that you'll pop over to the Facebook group, Friday Up The Grid, leave us a link. Leave us a link to your video so that we can, we can join you this weekend. I do plan on posting some Instagram updates from my stitching retreat this weekend. I have five projects packed and I hope to work on all five projects. Miss Letitia from The Crafty Curator sent me a skein of Brethren Blue. She also may have popped a few other goodies in that bag. When I received the envelope in my mailbox, I thought, that's a little bit big for one skein of floss there, Miss Crafty Curator. And it was, she, she thoroughly spoiled me. And I'm going to share with you on Monday the things that she, she treated me with. But there's a skein of Brethren Blue in there. So you know what that means? That means ink circles tapestry is going to happen this weekend. So it's coming with me. Tiramisu is coming with me. Northern Expressions Needlework, Shades of Wine. You know, go big or go home, guys. Three really huge projects, one new small, two and two small projects. The uh, Eileen Gurak design, the little boy, the silhouette design, that's coming with me, as well as my little new start, which is the February hands-on design. So I'm gonna be posting updates on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram at Off the Grid Needle Arts, and um, I love. I would love to see what you all are working on as well. We have a hashtag on Instagram for the for, for the weekend group. It's called, uh, sorry, it's hashtag Off the Grid Friday Party, and everyone uses the same hashtag. Even though we have um, Gerald's Saturday video, we have Michelle's Sunday video, and you know, isn't she cute? I love Michelle Bendy. She, I just, I really love listening to her. I always find that she has something really interesting to say and to talk about. So, and her stitching is pretty cute too. Um, so anyways, there's that. And then you will be seeing me if you're interested. I'm going to pop back in on Sunday 
and record a little video. There were some questions about the knitting tutorials that I'm doing. Great questions and I hope to answer them on Sunday night. It's probably going to be fairly late on Sunday. By the time I get home, my daughter has an orchestra concert on Sunday afternoon that I would like to go to. And then I, when I come home, I'll record a quick video, do a very quick editing job and pop it up on YouTube late on Sunday night. So, oh, full steam ahead, you guys. Life's too short to not stitch what you wanna work on. And as Stitch M says, it's hashtag sweet wee. That, apparently that's how you pronounce it, sweet wee. Stitch what you want when you want, which I couldn't agree more with. So, have a wonderful weekend, you guys. Happy stitching. I'll see you Sunday night.